Alright guys, welcome back to F1 News, a massive bombshell dropping today with Mercedes confirming their Chief Technical Officer Mike Elliott will be leaving the team with immediate effect. This comes just a few months after he was effectively demoted from being the Technical Director for overseeing and implementing the failed Zero Pod concept over the last couple of seasons with James Allison replacing him. Now he has, according to reports, decided to leave the team of his own accord, but one does have to wonder whether somebody had to be the full guy at Mercedes for failing to challenge Red Bull significantly over the last couple of seasons. Very much on Twitter, your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Plenty to dive into. First of all, so many rumours going on. This one, of course, included. We'll get to it in a second. But also, the whole Alonso to Red Bull thing. I thought it was remarkable, really, that Red Bull Espana tweeted this out yesterday with the, you know, shushing face emoji or whatever, like, keep quiet, there's something cooking here. And obviously, we got replies like this and replies. So I was like, okay, I'm going to say, you know, what's going on? Why are Red Bull themselves tweeted about this rumor that Alonso is going to go to Red Bull. Now, all the reporting from most sources says, yeah, there's nothing to this. Alonso might be doing something, but it's certainly not going to be to go to Red Bull. But the Red Bull tweet this out, so yeah, you got to wonder. And people run so wild with these rumors, I can't lie, to such an extent that there was a series of tweets today of people believing that Nico Rosberg is going to come back to the grid. And look, if Nico Rosberg is going to replace Sergio Perez next year, fine, I'll be there for it. But I think it's rather unlikely to actually be happening. And this is where the rumours started to emerge earlier today and actually yesterday around something going on at Mercedes. And we saw this going on, very strong rumour about Mercedes going around, possibly regarding a resignation. And then this uh, Winger Spice tweets this out, the cat's out of the bag, rumour doing the rounds that Mercedes are about to announce that Mike Elliott is off to pursue other opportunities. And in short order, this was initially revealed by Formula Uno. We'll look at their article here in a second because it's quite insightful, but also shortly afterwards by Mercedes themselves. This is Mike Elliott. He has been around in the technical department of various teams for around about 23 years. He's been at Mercedes for 12 years, longer than James Allison, longer than Lewis Hamilton, and has overseen and helped develop many dominant Mercedes cars. But the last two years, the zero pod concept, and especially keeping that for the W14, someone was going to have to pay. And it seemed like it already was Mike Elliott getting effectively demoted from his role as technical director. Now, the funny thing is, he kind of got promoted on paper because he went from technical director to chief technical officer, swapping roles with James Allison. But the fact of the matter is, he was got rid of from that role because the team that he oversaw had failed to deliver the appropriate results. And then as of today, he is resigning from his position and leaving the team with immediate effect. He'll be entering a significant period of gardening leave. There's been some discussions as to which team he might join next. A few people on social media have been linking him to Ferrari, but we really just don't know, right? And there's a long time ahead. But yes, Mike Elliott is, you know, the amount that he's achieved in the sport should be very much so commended. But people will remember what's happened over the last couple of years since taking the reins as the technical director, and it's not gone to plan. Because James Allison, after all the grind and all the work that it took over several years of being the technical director there, overseeing the development of the W11 and the W12, steps away, goes to work on boats or whatever, wants to chill out a little bit more, and then Toto calls him up pretty much at the Bahrain test this year and says, hey, James, we need you back ASAP. This ain't working out. Elliot's, uh, you know, made a bit of an error on this one, and this car is not going to cut it. Of course, James Allison comes back in. Mike Elliott then swaps roles with him. And now we get this latest update. And as Mercedes say, after 11 incredible years, Chief Technical Officer Mike Elliott has chosen to depart the team. Mike has been one of the pillars of the team's achievements. We thank him for everything that he's done. Best of luck with your next chapter. Now, of course, this is what the teams always say. Just to give a bit of background here, because it was back in March the 9th when rumours around the right, Mercedes are going to bring some upgrades soon. And Elliott had supposedly been given an ultimatum, which effectively says these upgrades have got to improve the car dramatically, results need to improve dramatically, or you're going to be ousted from the team. And it was only then in April when James Allison officially made the return as technical director, replacing Elliott, and then he became the chief technical officer. So as I say, 
On paper, that might be a promotion, but in reality, Elliot was demoted from his position as technical director after effectively failing to get the job done. And sure, Elliot might well be, and he certainly is, a phenomenal engineer and aerodynamicist. Whether he was best fit for that TD role? Quite possibly not, I think. You know, James Allison, obviously incredibly talented in his own right. What he's achieved at Mercedes and even before at Ferrari, definitely worthy of, of uh, well, being commended. But also... Seems like more of a, a leader type figure, you know what I mean? I think James Allison will inspire more confidence and belief in the engineers underneath him than maybe Mike Elliott was able to. And it felt like, okay, maybe Elliott to that CTO role, looking at more of a higher level approach, will be a good idea. But yeah, I think it's quite a common thing when you're trying to do a role, you've made it to the peak of where you thought you were going to make it at Mercedes as the technical director, all of a sudden you're getting you know, fired from that role effectively. James Allison comes in and instead you're getting to do a role you didn't really want to do in the first place. And now a decision has to be made with regard to his future. So just to clarify if you guys are unfamiliar with these guys, this is James Allison on the left-hand side. This is Mike Elliott on the right-hand side. And Mike Elliott's been at Mercedes longer than James Allison has. And they've both overseen in large part the development of many dominant cars. Allison gets a lot of the credit for the W11, but you know, Elliott should get a lot of the credit for the W07, for example. So, um, you know, of course, they've done a great job over the many years. Now, this is what Mercedes have to say. Mike has been a pillar of the team's achievements. And, you know, it's always all the stuff that they say. The question you've got to wonder is, is there more to this than initially meets the eye? Has Elliot decided to resign or is there a bit more to it than just that? Are we thinking that, all right, is Toto Wolf trying to make a point? Does James Allison not want, you know, any other ideas to be brought into the party? Because, you know, fundamentally, Mike Elliott has overseen the W13, which, you know, sure, I know that Toto Wolff has said it, the team has said it, they were happy that they took that risk to go for the zero pod. It was um, exciting when it first arrived, it failed to deliver the results, but it was carrying that into this year as well, which has arguably derailed their entire challenge for the next couple of years. If Mercedes had given up on the zero pod going into 2023, they probably wouldn't have competed as much with the RB19, but they probably would have won a couple of races, and next year there might have been the chance to actually fight for the championship. The way it's currently looking, the amount of development time they are behind the Red Bull concept and with the budget cap in place, the starting the season with the zero pod this year, and of course it didn't work there to change it, they've lost so much ground to Red Bull that actually challenging them for the championship next year in 24 and therefore also in 25 because come 2025, all the work is going to be on the brand new regs in 26. Next year's car is massively influential. Mercedes might have messed up their chances to even win a championship until 2026. That's how lots of people are looking at it. And that comes down to the decision to stick with the concept going into this year. And, you know, Mike Elliott is given a lot of the responsibility and the blame for that decision being made. Hence, we saw what we saw earlier this year with James Allison coming back in. So Mike Elliott, of course, went into that other role and um, moved into this role to renew the team's technical capability for the years ahead. With this plan now in place and in the process of delivery, Mike has decided to take a break from the sport in the coming months before deciding on his next challenge. So, you know, and I think James Allison said the same thing when he was working at Mercedes flat out, you know, such hard work, such um, stressful work. He wanted to take some time off and do a different role for a time. And I can totally understand Mike Elliott feeling the same way. So he came up with these statements as well during his time at the team and is wishing everyone in the team the best success going forward. And to be fair, what Mercedes say is echoed by what um, Formula Uno say as well, that Mike Elliott was promoted to replace James Allison at the time. Of course, course that's not been the case anymore because he's now returned to that position and after Mike Elliott has spent some time on the sidelines in a different role he's ultimately decided to make the decision to resign and uh, also they go on to say it must be stressed that Elliott made the choice to leave independently he departs on good terms with the Silver Arrows and there was another piece of this article saying that they'd had um, what was described as a confrontation but I think more so that was just a translation meaning you know a meeting where they you know kind of came to terms on this and Elliot decided that he was going to go but you do have to wonder whether because you know how this goes right you see the article initially from Mercedes and they say oh you know it was um it was a mutual decision or it was Elliot's decision and you know you gotta wonder whether there's always a little bit more to it than just that because I can certainly see a potential side of this which is Total Wolf trying to make it very clear that um you know failure will not be tolerated right I mean there was the rumors going around back in what was it early part of this year January February something like that that some engineers at Mercedes 
had messed up in the wind tunnel by putting like a wrong sized scale model in there and they'd all been fired. So, you know, talk all you want about a no blame culture, but at the end of the day, if you make a mistake, someone's got to, you know, because someone's got to get the blame and someone might have to be the full guy. And for Mercedes, not challenging for a championship and barely even a race win for two years is absolutely unacceptable. And I'm sure that Mike Elliott himself probably feels some responsibility for that as well. I'm sure, you know, he feels that maybe he should have done some things differently, especially going into this year. I think the decisions that they and he made going into 2022 were understandable. They thought, at least according to their wind tunnel testing and their simulators, that that zero pod was going to be absolutely insane. But um, it didn't work out that way. But it was the, the failure to move away from that. And even Hamilton described it even mid-season in 2022 in an interview, I think it was at Hungary, with Heike Kovalainen, where he said, look, I just hope that the aerodynamicists aren't so arrogant. Don't um, believe that we've got it right. And if we need to copy the Red Bull, we should do it. And maybe after falling into that trap, that's now when James Allison is returning. But um, still, Mike Elliott for some time now is that CTO role hasn't necessarily been involved on the day-to-day -day with the car development, so I'm not sure that he's necessarily been fired. But you can definitely see a world in which either they feel like or he feels like he should be kind of the full guy for this situation and has therefore made the decision to step away. Where would he go next? I guess we'll only time will only tell, but as a member involved in the very high-level development of the car, he will have a serious gardening leave. Like, he will take the rest of this year and probably the entirety of next year off before if he does want to join another team. And he's been around at McLaren, at Renault, at Lotus, and then Mercedes for the last 23, I mean, he's done, what, 23 seasons as an F1 aerodynamicist. So he knows what he's talking about. But of course, one mistake after becoming the technical director going into the new set of regulations has, in due course, kind of cost him his job. So Mike Elliott is leaving imminently and entering his gardening leave. What does this mean for Mercedes? Mercedes, right? Because this guy, as I say, he's done a lot for the team. He's developed many, many great cars over the years. And this is no doubt a loss of talent, right? I mean, you've got to think about it from that perspective as well. Sure, maybe he messed up on this car. And I know that a lot of Mercedes fans will probably be like, all right, yeah, he's finally gone. Therefore, like they're going to be cooking again. Not necessarily, right? And sure, James Allison's ideas will come to fruition truly from the start of next season, really. But nonetheless, I mean, what Elliot's done, the achievements this guy has, the experience and the abilities as an aerodynamicist, you know, a bit of brain drain, no? I mean, like one of your top guys departing the team is not exactly ideal. Now, maybe it's not the end of the world. You know, James Allison's there, of course, returning as a full-time capacity, but they've still probably got to look around and think, all right, we need a new CTO. Who are we going to get? right? If you're Mercedes, like what's the plan? Who do you get as the replacement here? Because we know that all the other teams have been trying to poach people from Red Bull right now. Ferrari are trying it. Aston Martin have even succeeded to some extent. Mercedes were the team losing all their engineers to other teams over the last five, six years. Certainly on the power development side, that's definitely been the case. Now it's time really for other teams to start getting people back from Red Bull and maybe Mercedes have to think in a similar way. Now speaking of Red Bull, a couple of things to say on the Sergio Perez side as Horner said, that he looked like the Daniel of old Mr. Dano Ricciardo this weekend and said that it's definitely the team's intention to retain Perez for next year, which... You know, the mix of opinions on Perez from internally at Red Bull is quite incredible. One day they're saying, oh yeah, no, for sure, Perez is our man, we stand by him, absolutely. And then the next day, Helmut Mark or Christian Honor are saying, well, you know, he's got a contract and, um, yeah, we intend to ensure that contract runs through, although that doesn't feel quite the same level of confidence as they might otherwise. And just to clarify on the Alonso thing, Perez has eight podiums this season, Alonso has seven, I think I said over the last couple of days that Alonso has had eight podiums this year. He's actually had seven, but um, yeah, okay, I'm not too far off really, am I? Norris has had six, Hamilton had six. It's kind of funny really because despite the fact that the season's it's not been a great season, let's be honest. Verstappen's won everything and, um, you know, who's going to win before the weekend starts. But there have been, even compared to last year, a lot of podium, a lot of podium sitters. I think last year there were seven drivers that got on the podium. The two Red Bull drivers, the two Mercedes drivers, the two Ferrari drivers, and then Norris, who got a podium at Imola. But apart from that, there was nothing. This year, we've had lots of podium sitters. Both drivers from five different teams and Alonso, and really Stroll, you know, I think should probably have been on there as well when the car was good, but that never happened. 
Ocon and Gasly somehow both got a podium this year. And Russell, I think that's, that's probably the most interesting part, really, is the fact that Russell only has one compared to Hamilton six. And, you know, it could, it could have been seventh without what we saw back in the US Grand Prix in Austin. And this, I thought, was a funny quote from Marco as well. He said he had a bet on with GP, Max's race engineer, before the race, saying that he actually made a bet that he'd lead into the first corner, Max. And for some reason, GP actually said, oh, no, I'll, I'll take the bet that he won't. But, um, yeah, Marco put a good bet on and it was uh, clearly a wise one based on how that ended up. So very much intrigued to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care and I'll see you next time.